coming forth. This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to fight my battles, Lord. This is how I fight, by worshiping you and magnifying you and lifting you up, Lord, because I can't do it in my own, Lord. I can't do it in myself, but it's all in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just be mindful of the Holy Ghost just for a moment, if we would. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Spirit, the anointing, just sweep over you right now. Let Him minister to you. Speak peace to your heart. Comfort you. Encourage you and strengthen you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When Moses walked up to the burning bush, and he received instructions. He said, who do I tell sent me? And the reply was, the I am that I am. Whatever you need me to be is what I am. Multitudes of needs in this service, but whatever you need him to be is what he'll be for you, to you and for you. Amen. I want you to raise your hand and take your need and situation and circumstance to the Lord right now. Come on. Lay it at his feet. Give it to him. This is how we fight our battles is by worshiping because he's going to bring us the victory. He's going to give us deliverance and he's going to heal us and he's going to touch us and he's going to anoint us. He's going to calm our fears and going to erase all doubts and uncertainties. He's going to solve all of our issues and our problems for us because this is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I ask our ushers if they would come. Could receive our offering for tonight. Give to the Lord. Again, don't let this crimp your worship. Don't let it stop your worship. God can feel somebody with the Holy Ghost while we're taking up offering. Amen. Everybody say, Lord, bless our offering and fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give.
miracles can happen. This is an atmosphere where your need can be met. Because we know the way maker. We know the miracle worker. He does the impossible. When David walked into the valley to face Goliath, he asked a simple question. He said, who are you to defy the armies of Israel? <laughs> who do you think you are? And can I tell you that tonight it still rings true? Who are you, devil, to defy the armies of Israel? Who are you to come against the apostolic church? Who do you think you are? Do you know who we are and who we belong to? I got royal blood flowing through my veins. My daddy is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Everything is in obedience to him. All of my issues, all of my, even you, devil, are subject to him. All over the building, I want you to raise your hand one more time. devil in Jesus name you know he infiltrates our service he is here every single service he is faithful the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name the Lord said I will be in the midst let me tell you who else shows up the enemy is here because he knows what will happen if you and I would lay aside all of our issues and all of our problems and all of our frustrations and all the daily stress that we go through and whatever we face with, with we're first with earlier this week and we don't know the uncertainty that comes, if we can lay all that go just for a brief moment, he knows that God can do more in an instant. And God wants to do something this very night. Come on, there's, there, there's a spirit that is stirring in our midst. One more time, I want you to raise your hands. I want to go to the Lord. Come on, I want to go through his throne, to his throne room. One more time, Lord. My pastor preached a message several weeks ago. I was watching it. And he said something that just stuck with me ever since. He said, we apostolic Pentecostals, we want to, be, we want to cast demons out. We want to find people that's possessed and cast them out. But yet, we can't get rid of fear, and doubt, and unbelief, and the uncertainty and anxiety out of our life. He said, he said, we can't cast demons out unless we get that mess out of our life. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise if you would. <laughs> you can be seated. Certainly good to see everyone tonight. Good to have Sister Jenna's mom and dad in service with us. Can we give them a good hand for being here? Get to be in the presence of the Lord to feel what I feel. I think so many times we come to Wednesday night, it's just typically called a, a Bible study, and we have to have those 
times those moments where we slow down and digest the Word of God. But I think we've, we've put it in such a category that sometimes we put a limit on God because God can move just as powerfully and mightily on a Wednesday night as He can a Sunday morning service. Amen. The same God that's here on Sundays is here on Wednesdays. Amen. I come to you today. I know that uh, before, you know, the VBS and other things that we were talking about faith, but I feel a direction. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that at some point in time, but I feel a direction. Us going in a different direction and Sister McCausen simply made a post today that I think it was confirmation for us that as a church, sometimes, sometimes we have to be reminded and refreshed of what we really are about. Amen. I, I, I'm all about great music and all, all about all the wonderful programs and I, I'm behind it, all of that. But ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, we're about winning the lost. We are. That's, that's what it's about. And I want us to remind, I want to remind us, and I have, the Holy Ghost has, the terminology I use, rake me over, over the coals, take me, he's taking me behind the woodshed. Some of you older folks know what I'm talking about. And uh, he's been dealing with me, and I just want to, you know, when, when kids are in school, I know every kid we got here just loves school. I've heard them say that. I, I just love school so much. And all of them are looking at me like I'm crazy. Even in, in, in our education system, they, they refresh from time to time. They go over things because... It's great to be reminded, and so tonight I want to be reminded that who we are, and that is that we we are to be the church that wins, that wins the lost. And in the Bible, the Old Testament, I, I promise you, I'm, I'm laying this foundation because I'm I'm going somewhere. I, I know with my thought, it may seem kind of odd with the spirit, the anointing that we. Jesus had, but I'm, I'm giving you what I feel like God's given me. Um, but in the, in the Bible, it's important to realize that the Bible was not originally written in the English language. The Old Testament was written in ancient Hebrew and Aramaic. The New Testament mostly, 99% written in Greek. And when the translations were made from those languages to the English language, we have to realize that there are certain words in their language that does not translate directly over to the English language. And, and so that being said, there are certain phrases and verses in the Bible that, that they have to get as close as they can to what they feel is the translation. And, and with that being said, the King James Version, which is the most popular, the, the, the one that sells the most as far as uh, Bibles are, are concerned, Jesus did not talk in King James Version language. He did not. He, he spoke in the day of, 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 of what he lived in and that type of language. Obviously, it was, it was translated over to the English language of that day, the thee and the thous and goest and all of that. But when he taught, this is something I think we, we often overlook. When he talked and he taught the people, he taught in a way that people could relate to it, that they can connect. That when he taught a parable, Troy, they knew exactly what he was talking about. The time and the place and the area he lived in was a very agricultural based. Uh, community and so when he talked about sowing seeds and reaping and harvesting they could relate to that amen he, he taught things that were related to his particular time period and so while some of these things may seem a little odd to us we have to stop and realize that 
it's according to his time period. But yet, even in the midst of that, the teachings of Jesus and the word of God itself still is relevant today. The teachings are still relevant today. They can be applied to our hearts today. Can you say amen? And so tonight, I want to talk to you on the subject of capital N, little a, capital C, little l, called sodium chloride, otherwise known as salt. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 13, Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth. Now, when he was speaking, he was speaking to those, his disciples and his followers that were present there today. But when you and I read it, he's now talking directly to us. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. He goes on and also calls us that we are the light. Very interesting point that I want to make that both salt and light speak no words. I believe that we should use words when necessary. I pray that we use wisdom when we use words. But more could be said about how we act and what we do versus what we say. There are a lot of people out there, I'm going to use this in a general term, that are Christian people. But actions speak other. I I have told this story before, and it fits with this tonight, that I know both individuals in this story, one of them being an apostolic Pentecostal pastor's son-in-law, was inviting another individual, they worked together, was inviting him to church and says, man, you need to come, man, we're just, whoo, we're on fire, we're hucking and bucking, and we're just doing all kinds of things and all that. And the person that was being invited responded back and said, Why would I want to go to your church when you don't act any different from what I do? Salt does not say a single word. See, I can get on Facebook and I can get on social media and I can boast of all the wonderful anointed things that I've done, but my actions speak louder than words. How many knows that's true? Jesus, when he referred to salt here, he did it for a purpose and a reason because he's relating to the people that's listening to him. He's relating to it for that time period. It's very important. Number one, in the physical, in the natural, salt is very essential for our survival. In the the natural, us right here. Salt is very essential for our survival. We have several that's associated in the nursing, in the medicine, field and they would verify I see head shaking it's very essential for our survival can I tell you that that Jesus said that he is the way the truth and the life spiritual salt is essential to the spiritual life it's very important can you say amen it's essential that we are the salt Because I can go out here and I can tell everybody I'm a Christian and I'm a pastor. And and I pastor the wonderful folks of Calvary Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church. But if I go home tonight and drop my family off and go back and go to the convenience store and buy a six-pack, my actions speak louder than words. Salt does not say a single word. See, I've had a shaker of salt up here. Since the beginning of service, you've not heard one peep from this shaker of salt. Now, if if it did start talking, we know one of two things. Either it's Jesus speaking through the shaker of salt like he did, or it's time to go home. I don't know. But this salt serves a purpose. This right here is important to our, our lifeline. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said, I am come to give life and give it more abundantly. The salt that you and I are to be is very important to the, the, the spiritual life that is given to us. You see, people are coming 
through our doors and people that we come in contact every single day, they're looking for something. I've long said, you've been here long enough, you know, I've said it many times. Everyone, I believe, is created with a void in their heart and their soul that can only be filled by God. The reason why people are so caught up in all the vices of sin is they're trying to fill that void on the inside. They're trying to find that happiness and seeing oh, that, that emptiness and that hollowness and that, and come on, and, and that loneliness starts setting in. And no matter what else they try to find, it will not fill that void. So that's why you and I must learn to be the salt that we need to be so that when we come across these people, we're just enough salt that is essential to their life. People are hurting. Just look at the world. They're hurting. They're desperate. They're looking. And we have, when I say we, it's nothing in us. It's God working through us. We have what they need. Can you say amen? amen. Salt is essential for life. And saltiness is one of the basic human tastes. Now, I probably will cover this again, but for years, I, I, I grew up in West Tennessee, and my mom and dad, they had a garden for as long as I can remember and still do. I remember growing up having to pick green beans and purple hull peas and chopping the garden and shelling the purple hull peas. We was getting all purple. Y'all don't know nothing about that. I remember that. And I remember picking those big, red, juicy tomatoes. Now, 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 see, see, I'm like Jesus. I'm starting to talk about something y'all can relate to, right? I remember those, those big, red, juicy tomatoes, and they looked so delicious. And I tried for the longest time to like tomatoes, and I just could not. I, I, <laughs> I tried, I tried them on a hamburger. I tried them with this. I tried to eat just a little. And I, me and tomatoes just could not get along. I tried my best. And, and after, after Kim and I had been married for a while, we were talking about this one day. And she made a simple statement. She said, have you ever tried putting salt on it? I said, I have not. She said, here, I'm going to cut you a slice of tomato, and you take just a little bit of salt, just a little, just a little salt, and it would, it would change. And it did. I can eat a tomato today. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> all because, all because of a, a little salt. Salt will change your taste. Just a little bit of salt. Now, y'all hang on. This is probably going to turn into two or three weeks because there is a thing of being too much salt. So y'all hold that thought in the back of your mind, okay? But something jumped out at me, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I knew I wouldn't be very long tonight, and that's okay. Uh, I don't see in the Word of God where there's a time limit. Or how long church should be as long as we allow God to have his way. But there is, a, there is a, a statement in commentary that jumped out at me. And this is really the most important part that I want to get to. All this foundation. Remember Jesus when he talked about a subject. He related to the people something they could relate. He, they can understand. They knew what he was talking about. They knew where he was coming from. In Jesus' day. See, for us, salt is just a common everyday thing, right? Some of you probably got 15 salt shakers around your house, and all of them full. Sister McCullough said, I got more. <laughs> it's just something that's common every day, right? It's use. But yet in Jesus' day, salt was a very valuable commodity, it was very valuable in that day. So valuable 
that in, in, in certain times the Roman soldiers were paid in salt. That's how valuable salt was in Jesus' day. In fact, the soldiers being paid in salt, it gave rise to the phrase, worth his salt. Anybody ever heard that phrase, worth his salt? That's where it came from, is in Jesus' day, the Roman soldiers being paid in salt. A valuable commodity. So when Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth, most of the time we talk about the salt of the earth, we think about the, the change in the flavor and change in the taste and, and preserving. We're going to get all that. But I believe Jesus, when I, when I, when I research it out and, and Jesus is relating to the people and, and they can connect, they knew that salt was valuable. And so when he said, you are the salt, you know what he was telling everybody? You're valuable to the kingdom of God. And so I come to tell you, each one of you tonight, you are valuable to the kingdom of God. Don't you dare let the enemy tell you anything different. You may not hold a microphone and you may not stand behind the platform but you are the salt and you are valuable to the kingdom of God and can I go a step further you are valuable to the house of God this church right here this church cannot be successful without you amen it cannot be successful without you so when Jesus was telling the disciples that day and the people he was teaching, while he was saying, you are the salt, they understood. He's telling me, the Almighty's telling me, I am valuable. I am worth something. I mean something. You mean something to Jesus tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You are important to the kingdom of God. Every role in the church of God is important. Sure, the musicians and the singers play an important role. They, they get us to that place where we, 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 we worship God and we get into that worship mode. And we got to have the word of God preached to us. And, and we got we to gotta be fed. But, but people who just come and they may not per se fill a role, but they just sit on the pew. You are just as important as anybody else because you got to come on. Your presence makes a difference. Your presence encourages us. And you being here encourages us. And don't you, don't you dare let the enemy try to discourage you otherwise. He's good at discouragement. He would tell you nobody cares. Amen. He would tell you nobody at their church loves you. But I come to tell you that Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Come on. Maybe, just maybe, nobody loves you. Maybe, just maybe, nobody likes you. But I come to tell you, Jesus said, you are valuable to him. And can I tell you in all honesty, it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks about you. Because you are valuable to the kingdom of God. You are important to him. That valuable commodity, come on, they can relate to that. They realize I am important to the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen. We can launch from there and begin to teach about the importance of salt, that we are the salt. But he, I believe, this is my personal opinion, I believe the reason why he started off with salt is because of the value at the time. People could relate to that. And can I tell you that the word of God still stands true. That you are all valuable and you mean something to the word of God. Amen. Every role in this church that you feel is valuable. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 29, Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. What that means is not one little bird can, will fall to the ground without the heavenly father being there present. Now, when I was in West Tennessee and I was attending the church with my father, Pastor, I was helping him mow the yard one time, and, and Sister Mary, I come across a bird that fell out of the nest, a little bitty fella. And I looked up, and there was two or three nests in a tree, and I didn't know which one it was. So I told him, I said, don't worry, little guy. Jesus is here. I don't know what to tell him. <laughs> but in all honesty, according to the word of God, that little bird does not fall without Jesus being aware. You think of all the birds across the entire world. And every time one falls, Sister McCausland, the Almighty is there. 
Let me tell you how awesome Jesus is. Somebody did a survey. Now, I don't know who this joker is. I need to figure out how to get one of these jobs. I'm just going to tell you. They did a survey, and they figured, this has been several years ago, that if Bill Gates was responsible for feeding all the wild birds in Texas, all the wealth that he's accumulated, he could feed them for only three days. That's just in Texas. But yeah, I serve a God <laughs> that each and every day when they wake up in the morning and they start chirping and going about their way, my God that I serve provides food and nourishment for them. And if he cares that much about a little bird, how much more are you valuable to him? The one, come on, he spoke. He spoke nature into existence. He spoke the grass. He spoke the land. He spoke the seas and the clouds and the trees. He spoke all of this into existence. He said, let it be. And boom, there he was. And come on. But us, you and I, he got down and he shaped and formed us. With it. We are created by the fingers and the palm of God. That's how important you and I are, God, are to God. He made each one of us in his image. He created us with his hand. If he cares that much about a bird, how much more does he care about you and I? Jesus goes on to say and says, For the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Now on mine, he's got a minus sign in front of the numbers. But he still has them numbered. The God that I serve... Come on. So awesome and so knowledgeable, he knows. Some of y'all, he just got a zero beside you. Don't... Uh, the God that I serve knows exactly how many hairs are on your head. Each one of us in this building right here, he knows exactly how much we have. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. He's saying if one falls in my heaven and the heavenly father's there to pay attention to him, you are valuable than many sparrows put together. Luke chapter 12 and verse number 6 is the sort of the same similar uh, story. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. I come to tell you when Jesus tells us that we are the salt of the earth, it's much more than adding flavor to things around us. It's much more than preserving the gospel and the anointing of God. It's much more. He's come to tell us that you are important and you are valuable to the kingdom of God. And can I tell you, as your pastor, you are valuable to this church. We need each other. Can you say amen? Everybody on this side right here, I want you all to look across the aisle at your neighbor. Everybody over here, look at your neighbor over that way. It's okay, you can wait. Did y'all know these folks over here are not your enemies? Did y'all know the folks over here are not your enemies? Stand up, Kim. She's not in trouble. I'm not calling her out. We are not your enemies. But it takes all of us working together. I, I, listen, I, I, I'm excited and I am proud and honored to pastor you. Great group of people. I brag on you everywhere I go. I do. But without fail, anytime we go to a conference or a meeting, we go to camp meeting about two weeks ago, the first night. I walk in and I sit down and I no more sit in my seat and there's a pat on my shoulder. Brother, we are excited of what we're seeing happening in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. God is doing great things. You know what? It takes all of us working together. I figured y'all would get real excited about that and just clap your hands. Let me tell you what else I heard. There is a member of this church right here. 
I mean, y'all probably thinking who it is. I ain't going to tell you. They told me about two or three weeks ago they have a really good friend that lives in Oak Ridge and attends another church of another denomination, of another faith. And I'm not knocking them. Please don't get me wrong. But they told this individual who's a member of the church that you attend. They said, we are faithfully watch every service of Calvary Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church. And if we weren't so ingrained and dedicated to the church we, where we are, we would be members of Calvary Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church. And let me tell you what else. We tell everybody else we know, you need to go on and you need to watch the services from Calvary Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a good thing going. It's not me and it's not you, but it's all of us being salt, being valuable to the kingdom of God and working together and pulling together. Come on, one pastor said, if we all push this wagon to the top of the hill, we all can get in and ride down the other side together. We are in this together. And I come to tell you that Jesus told me to tell you, you are valuable to the kingdom of God and you are valuable to the church and you should give the Lord a good hand clap of praise right now. It takes all of us working together. It takes all of us being that salt. It takes all of us being that light. And I am excited. While we were at camp meeting, I don't know how many people we had to come up to tell us that they were watching us all across the state of Tennessee. They were watching Calvary Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church. Multitudes of compliments of what God is doing. The new faces, the wonderful services. And I'm believing God's going to do even more. Amen, because we are all salt. We're all valuable to the kingdom and to the church. Amen. Let's all bow our heads if we would. God, we come before you today. I preach the word that I felt you have laid up on my heart for this Wednesday night, that we all are salt. More than just adding flavor to the taste, Lord, that we are valuable to the kingdom of God. It may not seem like I can do much, but you told me in your word, I am valuable to the kingdom of God. And God, I am proud to be a part of your kingdom and to do a work for your kingdom, Lord. And help me to be more that salt and the light that I need to be, God, to be sensitive to your spirit. And help us to go forth because we're believing great, wonderful, mighty, awesome things are going to take place. And when we come back on Sunday, God, you're going to pour out your spirit. And your anointing is going to be here. And you're going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. And you're going to change somebody's life. And you're going to impact somebody's life. And you're going to touch all of us, God, and move upon needs and situations. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. So tomorrow when you wake up or Friday or Saturday and the enemy comes against you and tries to torment you, just remember you are salt. You are valuable because Jesus told you so. Amen. Come back Sunday with the expectation God's going to do something mighty. If we come with the expectation, he'll meet those expectations. Amen. Amen. You're dismissing Jesus' name. God bless you. We love and appreciate each one of you.